Father Don, this is a big day for Catholics around the world. Number one, what are your thoughts and feelings on this historic day? Well, thoughts and feelings, I've got lots of them because this is historic for a Latin American to become the Pope. My feelings are, I'm deli delighted. I'm, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about him because I understand that he is a religious priest. He belongs to the Jesuit order and he's very interested in helping the poor, the disadvantaged. Um, also the fact that he took the name Francis, which is Saint, uh, the name of St. Francis of Assisi, who is the founder of our Franciscan order. So uh, he's endeared himself to me and I'm sure to most of my confreres as well. Do you think that he has, um, I'm not sure I say this, do you think that he has opened up new opportunities just by being someone from another part of the world as opposed, you know, from being in the Americas? Do you think he's opened up more opportunities of understanding among the Catholics and among the people? I would think so. I really would think so. I think uh, people pay attention when someone like that gets into that office and they will look for more opportunities and more equality for people in, especially in third world countries. Now, one of the things that we were listening to on, on television as before I came here to speak with you was about his character beforehand. That he's a very humble man. That he's a man who has, you know, eschewed getting a Cadillac or a car or whatever to go and has walked himself. Do you think those kind of qualities are going to be very important moving forward for him as now the Pope of the Catholic Church? I would certainly think so. I think it's going to amaze a lot of people, but I think a lot of the disadvantaged in the world will really be attentive to that and the, he'll endear himself to them in that kind of way. Now, there has been much controversy. There's been a lot of difficulty that the Catholic Church has been through in the last few years. Do you think with this Pope, someone who's coming uh, in from a different background, from the Americas, and someone who has a whole different uh, background than other previous Popes, do you think that he will be able to move the Catholic Church in a different direction? What are, what are your anticipations? What are your hopes for him in that regard? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I think his name says a lot about that. Uh, taking the name of St. Francis of Assisi is a way of, of calling attention to what St. Francis was all about. One of the things that happened in the life of St. Francis was he felt the Lord saying to him, go and rebuild my church. And the way St. Francis of Assisi went about that was not to scold, not to rebel, not to leave the church when it was going through a lot of turmoil back in the 13th century, but rather to reform it from within. He called people to holiness. He called priests to holiness. And I think that uh, in itself is very symbolic that he took that name and that it says something about what he stands for. And I, was, I expect that people will see that coming from him in all kinds of ways. Is there a need for a call to holiness in, in the Catholic Church now, do you think? Definitely. I think so often we think of reform as happening through legal action or, you know, laying down the law in, in whatever kind of ways. And I think St. Francis of Assisi showed that, that to, to a call to holiness, to prayerfulness, uh, to deepen our spirit of what we stand for is the, the substantive thing. Stepping back a moment to Pope Benedict, who is, is no longer Pope now, what do you think his legacy was and, and what do you think that the new Pope will be able to build on from what he was able to do in the church? I'm not sure I can answer that. I, uh, I know he tried to follow very closely what Pope uh, John Paul II stood for. I was amazed in reading just recently that he made as many as 25 trips I didn't think he had traveled. We, we think of John Paul as having traveled so much. But uh, one of the things, now that you do ask me that question, one of the things that he did really try to do is work for ecumenism, to establish dialogue between people of different faiths. And that, that goes a long way. And do you think that's something that the new Pope will be able to build upon with his background and his experience? Well, again, if, if these signs of him being interested in the poor, um, 
doing his own work at home and, and driving his own car and so on are any signs, then I would think so. I would think that he's uh, showing himself to be an open-minded person who is ready to dialogue and negotiate. Talking with uh, one of my co-workers, uh, she told me that there's kind of a, a disparity a little bit between American, American Catholics and Catholics in other parts of the world. American Catholics sometimes are a little looser on certain things. Maybe they're not as stringent on certain things like she was mentioning about bells being brought in in the previous pope and that's something from an older tradition that maybe American Catholics had done for years or whatever. Do you think that maybe that disparity, if there is indeed one, is something that can be uh, meshed together, healed, moved together, closer together among all Catholics? Do you think that? Again, I, I am not sure I can answer that question. One of the things that I seem to detect about American Catholics is that we think that the whole world should be the way we are in the way we practice our faith. Mm -hmm. um, the expectations of a pope, the expectations of what should happen in the church. Uh, we, we're very, very centered on our experience of Catholicism. And having gone over to Europe a couple of times, I find, you know, it ain't that way <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and, and, you know, we just, we need to be more broad-minded in seeing that we're not the center of the world, even though a lot of our economy and so on has so much influence all over, but it's it's quite different in other parts of the world, and it's richer that way. Tonight, obviously, will be a very important night. You guys are going to have service here tonight. What is it that you're going to say to your congregation tonight about this very important, very historic day for Catholics? Well, I won't be the presider. I won't be the celebrant of the Mass, so you'd have to ask Father Tom Shaughnessy. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. What is it that you think that the parishioners should think about this day? Let me rephrase that a little bit. Well, I, I would think, again, that it's a, a historic day and to be uh, enthusiastic about it. And certainly this man, has his, cha his life has changed dramatically. And so he needs our prayers. I think we need to stand behind him and offer our prayers for him and, and ask the Holy Spirit to continue to inspire and guide him. One last thing, or, or one other thing. Th earlier this week, we did a story about uh, students at QMB who've been watching the conclave and everything on television and being able to be a part of this historic moment. Some of these kids, I think, were seniors. At, this hadn't happened since they were in fourth grade. Uh, so what do you think that this experience has meant for Catholics to be able to, to see this experience, to see the conclave, to see all of this happen for, for those maybe who've never seen it for the first time and for those who it's such an important thing. What do you think it means for them? It's got to be an interesting experience because Pope John Paul II was in office for so long that they only saw one, and that was Pope Benedict in their lifetime. So uh, it's got to be a rather fresh experience since it hasn't happened in, what, seven years or something like that. Um, and I think everybody's eyes are just wide open, you know, anxiously waiting to see what's going to happen, what's he going to prove himself to be like, and, uh, you know, see what happens. If you had the Pope's ear and you could say to him, these are the things that I think are really important in the church and need to be addressed, what would you say to him? Golly. Uh, you're stumping me on that one. I really can't even imagine. Uh, there, there, I mean, there's so many issues, you know. There are just so many things. But uh, again, I think the, the important thing is to call people to, to holiness, um, to help people to be tolerant of each other, uh, to be forgiving. There's so much of a need of reconciliation and forgiveness, you know, and if, with people everywhere from individuals to groups uh, parishes, neighborhoods, and nations. Finally, my very last question for you. Okay. Today, of course, a very great and important day. How do Catholics, American Catholics, especially since we're talking about here in America, how do we take, how do American Catholics rather take this day and move forward with it? Uh, again, I think it's a wait and see kind of a thing. Um, 
We just need to get used to a whole new person who is there, who is our leader of the whole church throughout the world. And, uh, but hopefully, again, take our inspiration from him, from his behavior, his attitudes, and hopefully that can go a long, long way in bringing about reform. I mean, it's no secret that there's a lot of things in our church that need reform, but we're gonna be looking to him to see how he goes about it. And again, hopefully supporting him with our prayers. Before all the heavy work, today is a great day for Catholics, all right? That's right.